Hi, everyone. My name is Peter Tverdik, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Virginia. And it is a great pleasure to present our research on the use of focus ultrasound for the treatment of vascular disease. The title of my presentation is Towards Preclinical Evaluation of Sonodynamic Therapy for Cerebral Cavernous Malformation. And the work is done in collaboration with the departments of biomedical engineering and radiology at the University of Virginia. Cavernous malformations <clears throat> are hemorrhagic vascular abnormalities caused by mutations in any of the three CCM genes. The disorder occurs primarily in the central nervous system and has a high prevalence of about 0.5% in general population. The fragile blood vessels in the lesions are prone to bleeding, which can cause uh, serious neurological problems. The lesions are readily detectable with MRI, especially the T2-weighted and susceptibility-weighted imaging sequences. The symptoms commonly <clears throat> include weakness, severe headaches, but seizures <clears throat> and other neurological problems can also occur. In some patients, neurological issues progressively worsen over time due to recurrent hemorrhages. And the primary treatment option <clears throat> for CCM symptoms is surgical removal, which can be risky to the patient. Moreover, Multiple lesions in the familial form of the disease can be inoperable. In contrast, incision-free surgical technique, focus ultrasound, can be used to manipulate tissue deep in the brain. And in combination with compounds known as sonosensitizers, mutant cells can be specifically ablated. This approach is known as sonodynamic therapy. Therefore, <clears throat> we have asked if sonodynamic therapy could be used to slow down or halt the growth of CCM lesions. <clears throat> First of all, we need an animal model to test this novel experimental therapy. We have developed a CCM mouse model by genetically ablating the CRIC1 gene in the endothelial cells with a PDGFB creline. The gene is typically deleted on <clears throat> postnatal day five and the lesions are monitored over time with MRI. The lesions are distributed throughout the entire brain, and we have shown that the MRI scans can be aligned with histological sections, and that the individual lesions can be matched between the two modalities, which is very important for our approach. Moreover, our chronic CCM model has a lifespan of uh, four to five months, and in the late stages of the disease, Large blood-filled lesions develop in these mice similar to the human condition. <clears throat> By repeated MRI scans, we have characterized the cumulative as well as individual lesion dynamics over time in a representative cohort of animals. So these measurements provide a methodological foundation and a reference baseline for interventional studies. Thus, we have an excellent experimental platform for sonodynamic treatments. <clears throat> Focus ultrasound can be used following several different strategies. For example, blood-brain barrier opening can be achieved by ultrasound action on blood-borne blood microbubbles. <clears throat> blood-brain barrier opening around the lesions <clears throat> might enable targeted delivery of drugs, including immunological therapeutics, and this strategy is explored by our collaborators in a separate project. <coughs> so here we take advantage of the effects focus ultrasound elicits on certain compounds known as sonosensitizers, also administered intravenously. So this mechanism, termed again sonodynamic therapy, leads to generation of reactive oxygen species that can attack mitochondrial metabolism and subsequently lead to cell death through apoptosis. So while the premise of energy transfer from ultrasound to sonosensitizers is solid and well-established, the mechanistic details remain elusive. Several possible mechanisms, such as sonoluminescence, pyrolysis, or ROS production by cavitation bubbles have been proposed. 
Nevertheless, it is evident that low intensity ultrasound upon interaction with sensitizers leads to excessive ROS production and consequently <clears throat> enhanced cytotoxicity through the induction of apoptosis. <clears throat> so essential for precise and successful sonodynamic therapy is specific delivery of sonosensitizers to the diseased cell type. <clears throat> we have identified three different compounds that, that might potentially fit this criteria for CCM lesions. They include 5-PLA or aminolabulinic acid, BLZ100, which is a peptide conjugated with infrared dye endocyanin green, and fluorescein in the form of fluorescein conjugated glycoprotein isolectin. All these compounds are FDA approved for specific medical applications. In mammalian cells, 5-LA is metabolized to protoporphyrin 9 or PP9, the precursor of heme. PP9 is a potent photo and sonosensitizer. Sonication activates a chain of events that lead to the generation of singlet oxygens and uh, oxygen radicals and ultimately result in cell death. Brain cancers such as glioblastoma have particularly strong heme metabolic activity that produces high levels of intracellular uh, protoporphyrin 9. Consistently, ultrasound activation of PP9 in a, a rat model of glioblastoma resulted in reduced tumor volume as published by uh, the Hininen group and others. However, our initial experiments in cell culture suggest that mutant endothelial cells may not have sufficient metabolic activity to produce robust intracellular concentration of PP9. But further confirmation is necessary and uh, we have begun experiments evaluating cell death in CCM cells after SDT with 5-LA. <clears throat> BLZ100 is a peptide drug that is known to have a high affinity to brain cancer cells. Hobetz and colleagues have recently shown that BLZ100 also binds vascular lesions in CCM patients uh, with a high specificity and affinity. And uh, we have obtained the drug from the manufacturer, Blaze Biosciences, and confirmed that BLZ100 accumulates in the lesions of the mouse model. However, the drug appears not to be directly associated with endothelial cells, which might diminish its applicability to SDT for CCM. The, the pleiotropic anti-angiogenic properties of the drug seem to be worth launching a separate line of investigation. So finally, our histological stains have demonstrated that the CCM lesions have a high affinity to the glycoprotein isolectin IB4 conjugated with fluorescein. Free fluorescein is also a powerful sonosensitizer, which has been shown in a number of studies. And thus, intravenously administered isolectin may be a useful vehicle for the delivery of fluorescein to the CCM lesions, and this avenue will be explored next. So in summary, we have the CCM mouse model established, and it is a useful platform to test select sonosensitizers. Presently, we continue to develop molecular tests to evaluate how SDT affects CCM mutant cells in C2. And we are hopeful that these efforts will lead to incision-free therapy for CCM one day. And I thank to the lead authors, Kharija Sharifi and Delaney Fisher, and the labs of Richard Price and Wilson Miller for valuable collaboration. And I also acknowledge funding from the Focus Ultrasound Foundation. And uh, with any questions, please contact me by email or phone below. Thank you.